and sit down. Alright, alright, alright. Hello, hello, hello everyone, and welcome to another episode of More Content Talk. <laughs> That's the only show that cuts through the glam, the glitz, and all the bullshit to bring you the truthiest news that we can find. I did this because uh, this means yay, by the way. I think my wife told me that. It's like, yay! It's like sign language for yay. So, for everyone who knows sign language, if it's right, yay. If not, sorry. But I think it's right. Um, my child used to do that all the time. Uh... When he was younger, he'd do something right, and he'd go, yay, kind of was like, to like sign it and show how happy he was. It's one of the sweeter memories that I have, if not the sweetest, of him. Um, so, <laughs> tonight, uh, I would love to talk about genius. Do you know that at this moment, at this very moment that I'm sitting here talking into this microphone, that somewhere in the world, on television, on the internet, on uh, social media, on, um, I don't know, in radios and cars, you know, wherever, someone is talking about how much of a genius they are. That is a fact. You can't deny it. There's too many TVs. There's too many radios. There's, there's too many computers. There's too many iPads. There's too many iPhones. Somewhere right now, someone is going on about how amazing their brain is and how it is going to change the world. And there's so many someones doing that that it, it's an infinite amount of someones. In fact, there are now more geniuses than there have ever been. There's so many geniuses that you can change the channel and see the genius of, I don't know, rhinoplasty and then change the channel and see the genius of... Uh, spelunking and then you change the channel and you see the genius of just walking into abandoned places and fucking filming it and hoping you find ghosts and those guys are geniuses too now everyone's a fucking genius didn't you know everyone it's amazing this is the smartest society that has ever lived can't really do that great on the standardized test but who needs standardized tests we have genius what the fuck does that mean what does it mean to call yourself a genius? What does it mean when a lot of people call you a genius? Does that really make you smarter than everyone else? Does it make you any smarter than them, really? Or have you just figured out a way to prey on people's insecurities? Let's be honest. And I'm not talking about the term expert. Experts are experts. You, 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 you have expertise in something, you're an expert. It's very simple. It's also not as complicated to obtain as you might think. Yeah, you got to go to school and you have your training and have your experience. You go through the motions. And, and even if you don't go to school, if you continue to go through those motions, eventually you will pick up that skill. It could be through work, worker training programs. You know That happens too. It's out there. Didn't happen to me, but I've heard of it and I know it works. Maybe not as well as college, but it still does work to a certain extent. So my point is that anyone can become an expert in anything they damn well choose. So what's the difference between expertise and genius? There must be a difference. Because to simply be an expert, that does not mean that you have excelled at something, right? There's all kinds of experts who come on TV all the time and they talk to you about stuff and you sit there and you go... <clears throat> Right? Because they're not really that interesting, and so they must not really be geniuses then. Okay? I mean, maybe they are, but there aren't that many uh, boring geniuses. I mean, and that's that's the thing that's so interesting, right? Is, is when's the last time you've seen a boring genius on TV? Have you ever? Or are all the geniuses show-stopping entertainers? Because that's what I'm noticing re recently is that we're getting away from the real intellectual, you know, you're kind of Albert Einstein's, you know, and uh, we're getting into these performance-oriented people, and we're learning everything from them. 
there's nothing inherently wrong with that. I mean, I'm a performer. I'm talking to you on this podcast. But then again, I'm talking to you in a very small podcast, and I'm telling you that this is news entertainment. It's not just news. I'm not preaching the gospel truth. I'm not asking you to follow me or it's, uh, making false promises that I can cure anything or that, uh, hell, that I can even help you in any way. I can impart you with knowledge that can then motivate certain choices that you make that, or not. It's up to you. That's the point, though, folks, is that it's up to you. And too often you're giving credit to people who don't deserve it. And it's leaving a feeling a little empty inside because you're constantly required to recognize the genius of others while ignoring the genius within, within you. We can all be intellectuals and we should, in a sense, try to be. It's not something that we should be afraid of. It's not something that's boring. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> Talk to some of these uh, some of these uh, intellectuals right now and some of the uh, hatred they're getting and, and also some of the love that they're getting. And they'll tell you it's not boring. Because it's not all hate. There's a lot of uh, positive things that get done when, when you act in an intellectual manner and you engage in intellectual discussions. And it's not all emotion all the time and it's not all bullshit acting all the time. We can learn things from each other. We can prosper together. We can make the world what will make everyone the most satisfied. It's, it's too generic to say a better place. I was going to say that, but then I changed it. We can make the world more satisfactory than it already is. We don't have to settle for anything. The power is in all of us to do that. And we don't have to listen to the dictates of one intellectual genius or another. And in fact, we shouldn't. We should pull from multiple sources, reliable sources, of course, intellectual sources, absolutely. But we should not ever hyper-focus on one. This is where extremism comes from. When you begin to hyper-focus on one particular source of knowledge as, this, as if it is gospel, as if it is the word, you are breeding the grounds for extremism, especially when it comes to politics. And if you say, well, what about my religion? Religion shouldn't even be in the game when it comes to politics because that can lead to dangerous effects as well. You don't govern with your religion. This is America. And in fact, when you do that, you really harm honest people because you make honest people who are just worshiping in their home or just in their particular little group, you make them look like maniacs. And what do you think that does to the overall message of the religion? It's damaging. I don't want anyone to, to stop believing. I want a little bit more rationality combined with the belief, though, because you got to ground it in something. You can't sacrifice the entire civilization for a point. And this is, you know, something that needs to be communicated, I think, because it can happen. That life is not some crusade. And nor should we pretend as if it is, because who are we to say that it is? There are particular people in the world who want you to think that they're somehow superior. That because they read whatever book, they believe whatever thing, that now they are the ultimate being. They use this term genius, and it's a meaningless term. Because the true genius knows that there is no genius. It's, a, it's an act of irony. Because you realize that you can never possibly know everything. Even about one subject is very difficult to know everything about that subject. You would have to dedicate your entire life to it. And you could be great at it. You could be phenomenal. But you could still miss one thing. I'll, I'll highlight my point. He's a construction worker who worked his whole life, right? And um, he had never fallen off of anything. 
and the, and but he had trained for the fall right so he was thinking murphy's law and he had trained and they told him you know if you fall and you have a power tool in your hand you drop that power tool drop it and so he did he fell and he dropped the power tool you know what happened that power tool landed on the ground, stuck in the ground. He fell, and the and the and the drill bit went through his eye, 18 inches, I believe it was, or 12 inches, or something like that. It was long. Anyway, the guy lived, um, and oddly enough, no brain damage because it just missed. But it was wedged in his eye, and it actually was it had pushed past his brain, so it didn't penetrate the brain. So the guy survived. But anyway, my point is, even though he prepared for the worst. Even though he was smart, even though he knew what he was doing, he was an expert. He was not a genius. Why? Because a genius would have seen that coming and would have remembered to throw the drill far away from himself, even under that pressure. That would have been genius. So you see, genius is rare. Not everyone is going to be a genius in every situation. But thankfully, there are many of us, and we can pull from our collective talents to create the most genius world we can. That's what we should be trying to do. We don't need to waste any more time worshiping false prophets for their profit. Thank you for joining us today on More Content Talk. Uh, it's a beautiful night um, where I am. I hope it's beautiful where you are. I hope you have a wonderful day, evening, afternoon. Uh, what have you um, you can check us out on youtube at more content talk as well as instagram at more content talk you can follow us on twitter at more underscore content pls and you can also follow us on instagram at more content talk and when life gets you down don't you dare forget to laugh at something else i'm always i'm serious no i'm not i'm kidding bye <laughs>